Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to The Drip. We're gonna do something slightly different today. As you see, Jonathan Duncan is not with me. And if you have not already seen his testimonial video, I would ask, uh, stop right now, click it right here, and watch it. It is a powerful testimony video of what God has done, a mighty work in his life. And if you went back to episode one, you'll see that we said at some point in time, we were going to do each a testimonial video of, of just what God has already wrought in our lives. So you can get to know us a little bit better as, as we grow into this uh, area that God has called us into. And then, um, and really we would love actually, if you guys have done any kind of testimonial videos that you would link them in the comment box below. And we would love to watch them and just connect with you in that way that that we can just share and enjoy and and just praise the name of the Lord for all that he has done in our lives so uh, I pray that you have been blessed by uh, the content already in these videos and that uh, you continue to grow with us as we grow daily in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so I am Anthony Patton I am not Jonathan Duncan and this is the drip So yeah, I'm going to be talking today about a little bit of my testimony and it's just uh, kind of slight areas of my life as God uh, drew me onto himself and then moved me into ministry. And if you guys don't know, I actually am currently pastoring a church, Living Water Church in LaGrangeville, New York. And oftentimes when I wake up in the morning, it's like, I I'll ask the Lord almost a reassertion or a affirmation of, God, is this really where you've placed me as a pastor of a church? Because I don't know if you guys have ever felt this way, but the things God calls you into so often, you don't feel equipped to be able to do what God has moved you into. And, and the weight of sin and the burden of sin in your life is so heavy that as you look forward towards the perfection of Jesus, and as you start to study his word, as you start to get to know him, that weight of sin that's in your own life separates you in such a vast chasm that you say, how could I possibly work for the Lord? And something that's so encouraging to me is just recently I was hanging out with uh, one of the leaders of the North American Mission Board, and he was talking about his daughter. And in that uh, conversation, she was not living for the Lord. And uh, currently, and he said something that was, it just was so profound to me as, as I started to think about it. He said, you know what? She's currently building her testimony. And if the Lord does indeed draw her onto himself and she comes back, everything that she did is going to be a testimony for the Lord. And, and while we should abhor sin in our lives and we should disdain it and hate it with every fiber of our spirit and being, in fact, sin actually can bring glory to God because we are in that sin and entrapped in that sin and enslaved to that sin and God brings us out into newness of life. And that my friends, is why we glorify his name, because he has brought us from death into life. So guys, just a little bit of my story, kind of moving back to my early youth. I am one of those kids that was just raised in the church. I would count it as one of my many blessings that God has poured down upon me in life. Now, um, from a very early age, as early as I can remember, we went to church. And now we, we moved uh, to a couple different churches here and there, but primarily the most majority of my life all the way up until my late teen years was spent in one of two churches and um, in those two churches uh, I developed a lot of friendships I learned a lot about the word of God that I didn't even realize until much later on in life I had learned but the the sad reality of what it was to be in that church was I was not saved and really only looking back on my life did I did I finally come to realize and finally come to accept in myself, I was indeed not saved. Now, I had walked through the motions, I had talked the talk, I had prayed the prayers, I had done the age-old sinner's prayer. You know, so many of us who have grown up in the church have understood that and know what that's like, especially if you're from a family that's all Christian. At some point in time at a youth group or in church or some special event, you know, there's an emotional high or, or maybe there is really some true repentance in your life and you go forward and say a prayer, but then moving forward in your walk with the Lord, there is no evidence of salvation whatsoever. You're living a life of carnality. You're living a life that is so foreign to the Lord. And guys, that was me. I was completely that way. So bad, in fact, that when I turned to be maybe 15 or 16, and, and if you guys grew up in the church, you, you, can, uh, you can just track with me here. The older I got not being in the Lord, but being in the church, the more I disdained going to the church, the more it was like my parents had to drag me to church. I would sit in the back and I had a little, you know, one of those uh, Nokia cell phones that you could use nowadays as like a jack stand. You can stick, you know, they're so intensely durable, but little brick phone and it had a game on it. And that game was Snake. 
And I got so good at snake because I would sit in the back of the church and I would hold it down to my side where no one could see, especially my mom. And I would play snake on my phone, not paying attention to a thing that was going on in the church service. And I was there because my parents wanted me to be there. And then at times I was there because I had friends there. And, and at times I was there because I just thought it was what I was supposed to be doing. But really the evidence of that came forth as I started moving out of my parents' house and, and kind of branching out and living on my own. Really, really young um, in comparison to the world nowadays, is I moved out at 18. The Lord had uh, graciously drawn my soon-to-be wife to me, and uh, we met and we um, started uh, hanging out and courting, not dating, courting each other because she came from a Christian family as well. And in that, uh, our relationship started to develop, and I, at the ripe young yet young age of 19, asked her to marry me. And before I turned 20, we were married. And now, I was not living for the Lord. I was living completely for myself. I knew all the Christian terminology. I knew all the things about Christ. I knew the prayers, and I knew the Bible, and I knew the stuff about the Word of God, but I didn't know the Lord of glory in my heart. And, and guys, a train wreck of my life then proceeded to happen. From the time I was about 16 until I was 22 or so in that range, really, I just absolutely made a colossal and awful, awful mess of my life. Sin after sin after sin developed in my life to where I was so entrapped down certain layers of sin that I could not find the light. And it turned into the point that really, it is by the very grace of God in who he sent me as a wife. It is by the grace that he has instilled inside of my wife that we are even together nowadays. There is no possible reason in this world from a worldly standpoint that my wife should be with me right this very moment. And, and what a blessing it is for me in my life to have her. And, and now I can look back and see how God has manifest greatness in my life through the relationship that I have with my wife. But at that moment in time, in those early 20s of my life, really my wife should have walked away and left me because I was not living for the Lord. I was destroying our relationship both with her and the Lord and not being the spiritual leader of my home that I was called to be because I was not in the Lord. I was not of the Lord. I, I did not know him or want him or, or desire him. I wanted and desired the things of this world. And really, at that point, it got so bad, I was barely spending time with my, my wife. I was emotionally detached from her. I started to develop emotional relationships with other people around, including other women. And what that was is I was completely just disconnecting from my wife in order to continue to feed the desires of my flesh. Praise the Lord, he drew me back onto himself and, and drew me back onto himself in some of the hardest situations that you could possibly imagine. Really, I was at that early age of my life in my early marriage, my wife found out very quickly the kind of person that I was and who I was and, and the kind of things that I was doing in my emotional state and then in my sinful state. And, and what it was is it was this hard break moment in my life where all of a sudden everything came crashing down around me. And it was that pivot point in my life of saying, okay, I... I have made a colossal mess of being Anthony. I, I lived for myself. I wanted the things of myself. It was so bad, in fact, what I did is as my wife started to kind of find out things about my life and, and kind of realize the kind of person that I really was, not, not the person I was pretending to be on the outside, but the person that I really was on the inside, the person that we don't want anyone to see, the, that she at that point if, if I was her and, and many people in this world, she should have left me at that moment in time. Now, I did not just all of a sudden overnight change. Of course, I couldn't. Just it, without the grace of the Lord, I couldn't even change one iota of who I am. In fact, I would just completely tear down the opposite way. But the Lord at that moment in time reminded me of the graciousness of his character and presence. And, and he started at that moment in time to draw me onto himself. And, and I started to uh, very slowly pursue the Lord in, in areas of my life because I knew that morality. It was, it was nagging in the back of my mind, the morality that I grew up with in the church. And, and at that moment, in that low section of my life, I had not indeed at that moment, truly when I look back, turned to repentance in the Lord. What I had done is I had been repentant in an earthly standpoint. I, I didn't want or desire for anyone to find out the kind of person that I was. So, so I was repentant in the fact of people were finding out my sin. And really what that turned into in the long run was something that was so different than what I would have expected. Because in that earthly repentance, 
the Bible says very clearly that earthly repentance leads to death and that's it. But the Lord was gracious to me in that time and he started to draw me onto an, a heavenly repentance, a repentance in truth of what I was as a person, who I was as a person. The kind of sin that was in my life was not just because they were, they were sinful things to the people around me. The kind of sin that was in my life was day in and day out, I lived for self. I lived not for the Lord, but for me. And every single day I was heaping up for myself wrath. And that wrath could only be satiated by the work on the cross and by the price that Christ paid for me. And I, I knew that in knowledge, but I did not know it in my heart at that point in time. So I thought I was going to be the big man and I was going to fix things right then just because I, you know, I, I needed to get back on track with my wife. So I moved my wife and I kind of without even really spending time praying about it down to North Carolina. And we were down there for about a year and a half. And in that time, um, the, the Lord really worked on me a lot. And, you know, I didn't completely just utterly change overnight. It took a long time. The Lord slowly worked on me. I started to read his word and and I started to be drawn on to him more and more and more. And, and really at that moment in time, the recession hit and we were destitute. We were poor as can be. I, I had a great job. And when I went down there, it was, it was a great job. And then my hours kept getting cut more and more and more and more. And I couldn't find another job anywhere. And I was cut down to like very few hours a week and making no money. We were barely, barely able to live. And I finally just called my old job back up, up here in New York. And uh, they said, we'll take you. And, and we moved back to New York. Praise the Lord we did that because shortly after moving to New York, we were we were looking for a church at that point. I realized we needed to get into a body. We needed to get plugged into a body and we were looking for a church and somebody told us, guys, there's this church that's just starting. Its name's Living Water Church and, and you should check it out. So shortly after we moved back from North Carolina back to New York, we go and check out this church that I'm sitting in right now, actually. And, and there was just a handful of people here, maybe 10 people or less here at the church when we first attended. It was just getting opened and we walk in and guys, we never left. It's exactly where we needed to be. God drew me into this place and drew me into the love of the pastor that was here. And, and uh, his name was Derek. And, and currently he's gone home to be with the Lord. Um, but he showed me really the truth of what it was to walk as a godly man, as a godly husband, as, as somebody who was following the word of God in, in not just in knowledge and not just in deed, but in real spirit and in truth. Uh, uh, he showed me a graciousness of the, the love that Christians are called to have in their lives. And, and that's really, it wasn't that Derek grew that in me, but he pointed me to the one that could grow that in me. He pointed me over and over and over to Jesus Christ. And as I started to latch onto Jesus, my life started to, to radically change. Uh, shortly after moving back up to, to New York, I, I've been working on cars my entire life. Really, most of my um, earthly career was working on cars, I decided to start my own business. This is pushing back probably 12 years ago at this point. I started a, a mechanic shop and I, I ran that mechanic shop while attending here at the church. And I, could, I just was serving here everywhere I possibly could. I, I just loved this body of believers. I, I loved growing daily in the Lord. And, and I was also running a business on the side. My family started to grow. Uh, we adopted a, a son who's now 11 years old. It's crazy. And, but we adopted him at two weeks old. And then continually, my business started to grow and my family started to grow and the church started to grow. And I just saw this explosion of growth all around me. And then really looking back, I can realize, there was an explosion of growth going on within me as the Lord built my spirit up, the spirit that he had given to me and, and squashed the flesh down, building up the spirit. And, and that progression continued. And, and guys, I had rough times in that time of my life as I was being remade, um, as the Lord was, was working on me. And it was so difficult. And yes, at times I fell back into sins and at times I still do. You know, that's just a, it's folly to think that even as a pastor, you don't ever fall into certain sins or, or sins of the mind or sins of the flesh. What happens is the Lord is so gracious and he quickly rips you back out of those things and that does not leave you there. And as you feed more into the spirit, that becomes evident more and more and more in your life. But in that time, it was, it was hard. He was breaking me apart to remake me. And my family grew and grew and grew to the point that we actually have six beautiful kids now. And, and really the business was growing to the point it was self-sufficient. And Everything was seemingly around me going really, really well. And at that moment in time, my, my pastor, one of my greatest friends in this world, we had been uh, together here at the church. He, he came from Tennessee and planted this church and I had grown to uh, a great friendship with this guy. And um, he became sick 
uh, he came down with cancer and uh, it was just, we were just praising the Lord that he was going to heal him. And and sure enough, he the Lord brought him healing for a season and he went into remission and, and kept preaching here. And in that time of him being sick, Derek asked me to preach a couple times and I despised it because very early on at the church, he asked me to preach and I just told him flat out after I got done with that one time, I said, never again will I preach here at this church. This is about 10 years ago now. And then as he got sick, I, I just felt that calling to say, okay, I should step up and help wherever I can. Ask me to preach. Finally, I surrendered to, to doing that. And I, I started filling in preaching a little bit while he was sick. Well, he got better and just was back on fire and preaching here every Sunday. And I thought, okay, everything is smoothed out now. Everything is good. Everything is going to be fine. And now my family's growing, my business is growing, the church is growing, Derek's healthy. It's like everything's good. I love those seasons of life when everything's going well and and I'm growing in the Lord and and things around me are excellent and great. And then at some point in time, this is in about early 2019, I think in 2018, Derek actually came back down with cancer. Uh, it was found again um, that he had cancer, and but he started to go through treatments. And in my mind, this whole entire time, it's just, okay, he's going to get healed again. The Lord's going to take care of this. He's going to use it. But in that same time, the Lord started to work in my heart and change even my earthly desires for this world. I thought for the last 10 years of running a business that I, that's where I was going to die. I was just going to continue to grow the business until it was so prosperous and running so well that I would just use it as my retirement or I'd give it to one of my kids if they wanted it. And that, that was kind of my retirement plan. So I'm just going to continue in the business. I loved doing it. I loved everything about it. Um, but the Lord had different plans for me. And in early 2019, he started to work in my heart um, and make some changes there. And and I started to feel this drawing and this, this nagging to go um, into ministry. And really, I was just praying about it and praying about it because I had no desire whatsoever to leave the business, to leave uh, what I loved to do. And I had zero desire to preach. It was only when Derek really forced me to that I would get up here and preach or I would serve behind the scenes anywhere at the church he asked me to, but I had no desire to deliver the word of God. And and really to the point that I would very often tell him no and or ask him to get somebody else and only do it on the rare occasion when no one else could be found. And, and so the Lord was working in my heart in that early beginning of 2019. And eventually I brought it to my wife and told her how I was feeling. And and she started to pray with me of these things. And I think in the summer of 2019 is when I started to really contemplate what would that look like if I were to step out of the business and step into ministry someplace. And I thought, okay, I got to go to school and I got to kind of I started in my own earthly self again, making all these plans for what's coming, what's coming next. How am I going to get to that point? And, and really at that moment in time, the Lord I think through my wife spoke uh, into my life. You know, when Jesus called his his disciples to him, he just said, "Follow me." And you know, they just left everything they had and said, "Okay, Lord, we'll follow." And they followed him. And so that thought stayed in my mind to the point that in November uh, of 2019, that uh, I walked into the business after discussing it with my wife, and uh, I had uh, some people working for me, and I just went to them who um, who were working for me. And I said, well, you went from being employees to owners this day. And by the end of the month, I, I'm done here at the business. I'm just going to walk away. And in my mind, I had started to apply to school. So in my mind, it was just no connection here at the church. It was just, I'm going to walk away from the business. I'm going to go to school and you know maybe get a little part-time job someplace to try to support my family the best I can and go to school and see what that looks like. And But I knew that I couldn't devote myself to a full-time business and devote myself to ministry. And I just felt that urging of God to walk away. So guys, in that moment in time, um, I walked away in November of 2019 from the business. And then fast forward to the end of December of 2019. And I'm sitting with my uh, good friend, Pastor Derek, in a session in chemo. And and he has been going through chemo and going through radiation. He's sick. And I'm, I'm really not discussing with him at this moment the things the Lord has been doing in my heart or in the business. He had no idea that I was leaving the business. Um, he thought I was still there. And, and we're sitting in a chemo session uh, with him and we're chatting. And, and he looked at me and, and said, you know, Anthony, uh, I've seen a calling on your life um, that the Lord's placed on your life for ministry. And I don't know what it looks like or how you would function it with the business, but I think you should come on staff at Living Water Church. And so I came on staff after telling him with uh, great joy that I had actually walked away from my business the previous month to his shock. And I come on staff in January of 2020. Derek preached uh, the first week in January of 2020, and and that was the last time he was able to preach on a Sunday morning here at Living Water Church. He he did attend one more um, Sunday morning service 
while someone else was preaching and, and praise the Lord. He was able to come to a Saturday night service and do a baptism for a little girl whose prayer was that Pastor Derek would be able to baptize her. Um, but really, we didn't see Derek uh, much here at the church after that season. And, and looking back, it's very clear and evident to me how God worked and orchestrated everything. And, and in the season of chaos, it, it was not clear. And in October of 2020, uh, the Lord healed Derek completely by calling him home to glory. Definitely was not my plan or what I thought the Lord was going to be doing and, you know, how he changed so many things in such a short period of time. And, and uh, from that moment, really, um, I, uh, I just started to try to figure out what the Lord had for me at the church and started pastoring here at the church. And um, if I'm being really honest, daily feeling like I was not fit for this task, like I could not do what the Lord had called me into. I, I didn't have any formal education. I didn't have any formal training. I, I didn't know what it was to be a pastor. And, and as I started to, to fit into this role, I started to realize very quickly that without me even realizing it, for the last previous 10 years of my life, Pastor Derek had took me and discipled me and trained me and, and grew me and, and not in what he wanted or his wisdom or his knowledge, but he had just gently and continually and faithfully pointed me to the, to the Lord Jesus Christ, pointed me to the one who could really change my life and showed me what it was to, to be a uh, a true man of faith uh, showed me what it was to be a true follower of Jesus. And guys, that's really what we're called to do as leaders, as pastors, as, uh, as just Christians. We're called to point others to Jesus Christ, to, to share with them the love of our Savior, the glory of what he has done in our lives, and the majesty of of what awaits for those that believe in him. And, and one of my favorite verses of all time that has stayed with me throughout this whole entire process is in Romans. One of, one of my favorite chapters of the Bible is Romans chapter 8. And in Romans chapter 8, uh, Paul's talking about when we, when we really don't know, when, when the groanings of our spirit are too deep to even call out to the Lord, it says the spirit intercedes on our behalf. And, and as the spirit intercedes on our behalf, that... Paul goes into this segment to the Roman church where he is saying, for those who are called according to his purpose, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to his image, the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. And then he goes on and says, what are we to say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us graciously. How will he not also with him give us all good things? Who can bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who can condemn? It is Christ Jesus that paid the price. More than that, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf. Who can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord? And guys, that is some of the most powerful passages. It really has been so evident in my own personal life as I've seen the Lord work in my life as, as he was gracious to me, so incredibly patient with me. And Second Peter actually says that in Second Peter 3.15, it says, we should count the patience of the Lord as salvation. And indeed, I can look back at my life and count the patience of the Lord as salvation. He worked a great work in my life, even in my stubbornness, even in my betrayal of him, even in my rejection of him, because that's really what it was. I heard the message of truth growing up and I rejected it. And I really utterly destroyed my life and, and hurt so many people around me in my sin and hurt myself in my sin. And, and the Lord has been so incredibly faithful, so gracious to me to draw me back onto himself. He who started a good work in you is faithful to complete it in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and that's what I'm seeing him do in my life, the evidence of him taking my heart of stone and making it into a heart of flesh. And, and guys, I pray that if that is your testimony, if you have some 
great testimony. I don't have one of those. Like I was uh, incredibly enthralled in drugs and alcohol and, and the Lord ripped me out of some crazy like situation. And, and when I look at somebody like Jonathan's testimony, I see, look at what the Lord has wrought in his life. And, and for me, when I look back, it's just, man, I just made an awful mess of my life and the Lord was gracious to me. And I don't have this great, powerful uh, salvation conversion experience. Uh, really, if you asked me, when were you saved? I would say, sometime in my mid-20s, sometime in my early to mid-20s is when I was saved, as I pursued the Lord, as I sought after him in spirit and in truth, as, as, as he was gracious to come in and give me the ability to even search after him and find him, really, he worked that in my life. He, he made the changes in my heart. He wrought what is now in my life inside of my being. He took my heart of stone and made it into a heart of flesh. And now I just want to serve the king and serve him for what he's done in my life. So that's my desire, that's my passion. I don't know what the Lord has for me in the future, but I do know this, the Lord has always and will always be faithful. His word is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he has promised that the work that he started in me, he will bring to completion on the day of glory. And that's what I stand on, guys. That's why I serve him. That's why we talk about the truths of God's word, because he is such a good, good God, always faithful, always loving. I pray that's the same for your lives. If it's not, grab somebody at your local church and talk to them. Grab somebody that can teach you about the truths of God. If it takes 10 years, if it takes 20 years, if it takes 50 years, get to know him. Get to know the God that we serve. And it will utterly and completely change every aspect of your being as you serve the King of Kings and the Lord of glory. Love you guys.